Hello everyone. Today we start chapter five, process synchronization. In chapter three, we classify the processes into two types, independent and cooperative. In independent processes, execution of one process does not affect the execution of other processes. While in cooperative processes, execution of one process affects the execution of other processes. Process synchronization is a way to coordinate processes that use shared data. It occurs in an operating system among cooperating processes. Processes must be scheduled to ensure that concurrent access to shared data does not create inconsistencies. Back to the pounded buffer producer consumer problem. I will quickly review the two slides discussed in chapter three. The shared buffer is implemented as a circular array with two logical variables, in and out. The variable in points to the next three position in the buffer and the variable out points to the first full position in the buffer. Both these variables are initialized to zeros. The buffer is empty when n equals to out, and the buffer is full when n plus one mode buffer size equals out. And these conditions will be used in the producer-consumer quotes. Here we have the quotes for the producer and consumer using shared memory. After producing an item in next produced, the producer checks if the buffer is full. If it's full, then it should wait since it cannot insert items in a full buffer. Otherwise, the next produced item is inserted in the buffer, buffer n, and n is incremented by one mode buffer size. In the consumer code, if the buffer is empty, then the consumer should wait. Otherwise, an item is consumed from the buffer into next consumed, and out is incremented by one mode buffer size. The solution for the producer-consumer problem allows at most n minus one items in the buffer at the same time, where n is the buffer size. Suppose we want to modify the algorithm to remedy this deficiency. One possibility is to add an integer variable counter initialized to zero. Counter is incremented every time we add a new item to the buffer and is decremented every time we remove an item from the buffer. The codes for the producer and consumer processes can be modified as follows. In the producer code, we check if counter equals buffer size, then we have to wait. Otherwise, the next produced item is inserted in the buffer and the pointer n is incremented by one mode buffer size and the counter is incremented by one. In the consumer code, we check if the counter equals zero. In this case, since the buffer is empty, we have to wait. Otherwise, an item is consumed from the buffer into the next consumed. Out is incremented by one mode buffer size and counter is decremented by one. If we consider these routines as independent routines, then they are correct. But if they are executed concurrently, they may not function correctly. Suppose, for example, that the value of the counter is five and the statements counter plus and counter minus are executed concurrently. After executing these instructions, the value in the counter may be four, five, or six. The correct value is five, and the values four and six are incorrect. To show that, suppose the counter plus is implemented in a machine language as follows counter is loaded into register one, 
increment register one and store register one into counter. And the statement in the consumer code counter minus is implemented as follows. Counter is loaded into register two, decrement counter, and then store register two into counter. The concurrent exclusion of counter plus at counter minus is equivalent to a sequential execution in which the low order statements presented here are interleaved in some order. One such interleaving is as follows. Counter is loaded into register one, register one is five. Increment register one, register one is six. Counter is loaded into register two from here. Register two is five. Decrement register two, register two is four. Store register one into counter, then we have six in counter. Store register two in counter, so in counter we have four, which is incorrect. If these two statements are executed in the opposite manner, then in the counter we will have six, and both results are incorrect. We arrived at this incorrect result because we allowed both processes to manipulate the variable counter concurrently. The variable counter is shared between the processes. A situation like this, where several processes access and manipulate the same data concurrently and the outcome of the execution depends on the order in which the access takes place, is called a race condition. To guard against the race condition, we need to ensure that only one process at a time can be manipulating the variable counter. To make such a guarantee, we require that the processes be synchronized in some way. And this is what we are going to discuss in this chapter. In summary, process synchronization is the task of coordinating the execution of processes in a way that no two processes can have access to the same shared data and resources. It's needed in a multi-process system when multiple processes are running together and more than one process try to gain access to the same shared resource or data at the same time. This can lead to the inconsistency of shared data. So this change made by one process not necessarily reflected when other processes access the same shared data. To avoid this type of data inconsistency, the processes need to be synchronized with each other. Suppose, for example, that two persons have joined account and the value in the account is $1,000. Person A, wife, for example, and person B, husband. And suppose that the two persons or two processes are accessing the joint account, the shared variable, at the same time from different locations, A for write operation and B for read. Write because a withdraw of value $500 from ATM machine and person B is trying to read the value to write a check to a third person. B read the value in the account since it is 1000, so I will write a check to person C of the amount $900, and this is okay. But the value actually, after performing the right operation, is $500. Although the operations the read and write are performed concurrently, but we read the value before the write takes place. So when person C goes to the bank, he will not be able to receive this value. This is a simple example to demonstrate why synchronization is required. For today, that's all. Thank you.